this is John from TG Nexus coming at you with another deck guide, this time doing an update of one that we had already done, and that being Teamer, Rhino, Crash Cade, whatever you wish to call it, in the modern format. As a friendly reminder, if you do like these informative-based modern videos, please consider subscribing to the channel, giving us a thumbs up, leaving a constructive comment down below, and maybe letting me know what deck you might like to see us do next. So one of the decks that has kind of fallen behind in the kind of arms race that was the modern format as deck lists were perfected with Modern Horizons 2 cards was Team of Rhinos. While it was still a top tier echelon deck and was a deck that certainly put up results here and then, it was kind of replaced as the top ca cascading deck by the presence of Living End in particular. However, there have been some un kind of unexpected shakeups in the modern format as, you know, there weren't a ton of cards that people expected to see a ton of play in Dominary United and Modern, you know, as the barrier to entry for Modern is quite high despite what things like Modern Horizons 2 and Thrones of Eldraine have shown, you know, oftentimes sets don't really shake up the modern format all that much. Kind of like Legacy, you really have to be kind of crazy things like Oko and such. But one card that has kind of force people to look outside the, the box in terms of building is uh, Leyline of Binding. Now, Leyline of Binding is basically an Oblivion Ring cast out effect that has a very unique thing. Number one, it's a instant speed thing. So much like cast out, it can be you know used in a more tempo-ish uh, thing, but it also has domain that reduces its cost by one for each basic land type amount of land you control. And much unlike a format like Pioneer, it's very trivial to add a, um, you know, a Triome to your land base to add like your third or fourth color. You know, people were already stretching it to do, you know, random things. You know, sometimes they would play Teferi in this deck. Sometimes you'd see Arden Please in these decks. And now this just kind of gives you another reason to kind of expand into those things. Uh, it's kind of taken a couple different forms of the versions. Uh, the first is the Orion build that we're going to look at, which much like anything else, expands to include the elementals, so you see, see things like Solitude as additional uh, interaction for things like Murktide and such, which could be a problem for this deck. And then, you know, beyond that, you're also playing more copies of the Cascade spells. So ironically, by adding 20 more cards to your deck, you actually get a little bit more consistent at finding a K Cascade card in your opener. And then you still get to play things like Endurance to cycle your and crashing footfalls back in, while also, you know, having a little bit more of a hedge against things like uh, living in and such. Now, you do get a little bit less consistent at your fire ice into cascade combo, um, as that would be something to happen, and this failure to comply, um, you know, is just kind of a filler card, but, you know, does show you that there are some flex bots in these 80 card versions. Um, Leyline obviously gives you a unconditional removal spell that often costs you one or two mana, depending on how you open the game up. Um, and you also get access to Teferi in post-board games if you so choose. Um, this obviously is very powerful, but it does spread out your mana base a little bit, and you are no longer really able to play Blood Moon in your deck, and you are a little bit more vulnerable to Blood Moon depending on how you fetch. Uh, you get to play copies of Beseju and Unawaru, and then obviously you get to kind of fill in the blank with all these different... Uh, but the main thing you're adding is Arden Plea, some copies of Endurance, some copies of Solitude, and, you know, you have these other flex spots that can be filled by things like Teferi and such if you so choose. This one chose to go with more of the uh, elemental package with Endurance, Subtlety, and um, Solitude. And I've also seen some of these lists running Omnath as well. So, much like Glim's Combo, when you want to improve the deck, just add some elementals. But Leyline of Binding obviously being the main draw to this particular version. Gives you a removal spell that can deal with anything and even gets around stupid things like Eidolon, the Rebel, and Burn without dealing a damage while also being a fairly cheap, you know, two mana or three mana removal spell on like turn two or three. And then later games, you can often use the pair of this with other things as a one mana removal spell. As far as the sideboard, you know, you're seeing a lot of the same options. You know, you're still restricted by your cascading. Um, you're still kind of cascading your runos, so you're still restricted with things like Force of Negation and Mystical Dispute as your counter spells of choice. You can't really play things like Fluster Storm or Veil of Summer. Force of Vigor, obviously, kind of the go to against the Urza Saga Hammer Time decks. Uh, Supreme Verdict obviously gives you a nice little juke against the various 
uh, creature decks in the format, particularly Murktai, being able to kill Murktais and Ledger Shredders and everything else. And then obviously Wear Tear kind of coming in as you need additional ways to answer things like Blood Boon that were, weren't necessarily previous, previously not really a threat to your deck. But you know, now that you're playing the more spread out mana base, you're a little bit more vulnerable too. The other innovation or change that has started to pop up a little bit um, is in the 60 card version. Uh, instead of running, you know, things like Solitude and such, and while this mana base does run, you know, the different uh, Trilands to be able to turn on your Leyline of Bindings and cast them, instead it's choosing to run Sign of Draco, which is an interesting uh, attack thing that you really find mainly in, like, either uh, decks like Calibrated Blast or Domain Zoo, is a 12 mana cost 4-4 flyer that happens to get... Um, reduced in cost for each basic land type you have. So oftentimes on turn two, this can come down as a two mana 4-4 four, four flyer. It also has text that says, each creature you control has vigilance if it's white, hexproof if it's blue, lifeline if it's black, first strike if it's red, trample if it's green. You know, all the fun stuff when you're playing things like Fury and things. So, um, but you know, its main thing is it's an under cost of beater that puts more pressure on the opponent outside of the rhinos and gives you this another other angle of attack beside ley line of binding to be able to deal with all the things while retaining the consistency of the 60 card version of you know things like fire ice into your cascade spell etc and still giving the flexibility of playing the more teamer based deck while also having you know the the power of the domain with ley line of binding and cyan of draco and then obviously sideboard seeing a lot of the same things you're seeing force of vigors for the various uh Hammer Time and uh, Affinity based decks, as well as the Urza Saga decks. Leyline in the Void in place of Endurance here. I would suspect this might be a budget thing, um, as in this deck gets quite expensive, but you know, still also a nice thing. Gets around my Leyline Saga because these those decks like to play Mystical Disputes for you know the blue based decks, especially uh, things like um, Murktide and such, and blue control decks such as Four Color Control, which also. We'll have some updates coming as there's been some new results coming in with some of the unexpected domain cards in that deck. Then Kassali Ambusher, if a creature is attacking you and you control forest and the plains, you may cast Kassali Ambusher while applying its main cost. Quite an interesting little uh, get around. Um, I'm not really sure what this is up against other than maybe the other domain decks. And finally, Wear Tear as a way to also answer Blood Moon. Once again, you really can't play Blood Moon in this deck anymore, which is a downside, but you know the, the plus side is you do get to run Leyline of Bonding, which was basically an unconditional removal spell, and then Sign of Draco as a way to pressure the opponent. Now, as to which of these versions will probably be the main running forward, I think it really comes down to that the Urion 80 card versions are just slightly more powerful. Um, you know, adding the elementals to any of these decks kind of makes the decks a little bit better. Um, that said, you are losing a little bit of consistency with the deck, but you know these Urion piles are showing up more and more often and you know if you look at any of the various decks in the format you know like the glimpse combo deck they added elementals suddenly got better Rakdos midrange added a fury and grief their deck suddenly better you know these elementals are starting to pop up more and more and while people have said that ragavan was the the truly broken annoying card of modern horizons too it means to be seen that some of these elementals might actually hit the ban list first before them but you know in the meantime they're very good value plays they allow you to get around the casting cost issues that come with playing the various cascade deck so you know if it improves the deck why not try it out as to which of these versions will end up being better i don't know i would suspect the urion version but the sign of draco is an interesting little twist on things leyline abounding has certainly shaken the format up and kind of breathe a little bit of new life into the teamer uh, rhinos deck that was kind of struggling a little bit i guess we now have to call four or five color rhinos but Anyways, just wanted to do a quick update on these, you know, the effects of the change of Dominary United have had on the format. It may to be seen if it'll be more of a permanent thing or if it'll eventually go back to the teamer things, but I do think the changes do bring more power to the deck, do bring a little bit more flexibility to the deck at the cost of the mana base being a little bit more shaky, so. And obviously not being able to run Blood Moon, so. It may to be seen which of those is more important, but, you know, it is nice to see innovations in the top echelons of Modern, which had grown kind of a little bit stale before Dominary United.